um, with things in the future, but certainly not. you know, what it was, what it was that drove him to drink and, and treat blood as he did. Um, it, it is, it is said that he really became obsessed with blood during his stages of extreme hypochondria. Um, that vampire connection, connection, it showed early on when he believed that his heart had stopped, essentially making him a walking corpse. But his taste for blood really became evident after he was institutionalized in 75 for paranoid schizophrenia. And that was, of course, after he tried to inject himself, or he, he was successful in injecting himself with rabbit's blood, and he became severely ill in the process. Um, quite honestly, um, for me, that would have been the, that would have really been the, um, the key to him being, um, a threat to society. Anybody who's thinking like that, anyone who is, who has those, um, those issues, man, that, that should be huge warning signs to us. I don't care what their age is. Huge warning signs. So I feel certain he is a very good case for the argument of nature versus nurture. I think he was born with some extreme deficits. And I think that his claim that he was abused as a child, heavily abused as a child, is probably very true. And I think that that probably contributed to it. But, um, again, this was in the seventies, so you don't really have a system like we have today. I think we have a lot more warning signs, things that we are aware of, but I do think we have much more work to do. We have so much more work to do. So, um, I'd love to know your thoughts about, about him and his, um, his lifespan, the things that happened to him, maybe a comparison. It would be interesting to compare and contrast um, his behaviors to other, to behaviors of others who were also into necrophilia and cannibalism. Um, what's, is there a connection there? Because that's our most extreme, really. That's our most extreme serial killers. We have serial killers who rape. We have serial killers who, you know, dismember bodies. Um, there's categories that we can look at, but what's that common denominator or is there multiple common denominators? So for me, that's very interesting and something that um, I'm starting to build um, a spreadsheet on to see if there is, you know, more of a connection than we've realized in the past. So I'll be interested to, to see that once I get it, once I get quite a few on there, you really just have to, um, it takes a long time to gather that kind of data and to actually start seeing a trend. And that's why it's going to take some time. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and I hope that you've learned something, um, as always. And, uh, if you have questions or thoughts, you know that you can always email me at Dr. Kimberly Cassidy 89 at gmail.com, or you can, um, Go on Facebook, which is Composition of a Killer, and comment on there. You can also um, go to my webpage, which is compositionofakiller.com, um, and those are direct links to all of the podcasts as well with pictures. Um, not those, not the really bad pictures. I will not post those, but you can find them online if you're if you're interested in it. Again, I warn you that it's very gruesome. Um, disturbing even for me who, I mean, and I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of things. Um, one of the worst cases I've ever seen. So kind of gives you a glimpse into the mind of that person. 
So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. And as always, have a wonderful day. Um, I'll be doing another episode either today or tomorrow. So look out for that as well. Hope you have a great day and be safe.